Mini split air conditioning systems are known all over the world. You see them literally everywhere. How do they work and what do the different parts do? Well, let's have a look. Air conditioning is made to create indoor temperature comfort. So a large part of the split systems that we are looking at are cooling down the rooms in an apartment, a house or a small shop. The indoor unit serves three purposes. It's cooling down the air, it circulates the air and it dehumidifies the air as well. That's at least what most of the systems in the temperate areas of the world would do. Usually the indoor unit is also monitoring the temperature, both of the room and that of the exhaust air from the fan. And it doesn't take much of calculations for the built-in mini computer to calculate the amount of cooling needed to reach the temperature that you set with your remote control, like 70 degree Fahrenheit, for instance. That's about 21 degrees Celsius. The laminar centrifugal fan sucks in the hot air, usually from the top of the unit, blows it through the evaporator. That's a grid of usually copper tubings with fins, inside which a refrigerant is boiling. When the refrigerant is boiling, it takes out energy of the hot air, and by removing the energy, it cools down the air. Now, the refrigerant has stolen the energy from the indoor air, and the refrigerant is pumped to the outdoor unit. When the air is cooled, the water content in the air will condense on the cool surface of the evaporator and drip down into a tray and flow via a drain tube to the outdoor oilless sewer. Some mini splits will have a special dehumidifier function which will control the indoor fan and the compressor speed to optimize the condensing of the water in the indoor air. Via some clever arrangement, and we'll come back to that later, the evaporated refrigerant is pumped under pressure to the condenser, which is the most visible part of the outdoor unit because of the fan. And the hot refrigerant is cooled down, which means that the energy from the indoor cooling is actually released in the form of heat. Also here the temperature can be monitored to control the compressor and the condenser fan speed, depending on the outdoor temperatures. The higher temperatures, the higher speeds. So, in essence, the two units transport the indoor heat to the outdoor. Or, depending if the split unit is reversible, it may in fact transport heat to the indoor. This reversible system is actually widely used in the cooler hemisphere, like here in the Nordic European countries and Canada and northern USA. So let's just say that we'll still want 70 degree Fahrenheit indoor, but now the outdoor temperature has fallen to some 45 degree Fahrenheit. That's about 7 degree Celsius. But the built-in mini computer registers that the temperatures are dropping both indoor and outdoor, so it switches to heating mode. That means that the four-way valve inverts the flow direction of the refrigerant and, at the same time, adjusts the speed for both the fans and the compressor. Now, the outdoor unit is the coldest part, because what was the condenser before is now the evaporator. And just like it did in the indoor unit before, the refrigerant is now boiling in the outdoor unit. It steals energy and thereby heats from the cool outdoor air, and the refrigerant is now under pressure pumped into the indoor, where the hot vaporized refrigerant transmits heat to the air flowing through the indoor unit, and thereby heats up the indoor air and the room. There are some essential parts that we should have a, look, a closer look at, so let's first focus on the expansion device which in this type of system is an electronically controlled bidirectional valve. That is, it works with flows in both directions. The valve throttles the flow of refrigerant, which basically means that the pressure on the inlet side is higher than that on the outlet side of the valve. The lower pressure on the outlet side helps the refrigerant evaporate in fact, lowering the pressure is essential to the evaporation process, where the refrigerant goes from liquid phase 
on the high pressure side to vapor phase on the low pressure side to actually turn from liquid to vapor the refrigerant must have energy added in the form of heat and that's what it steals from the surrounding here the air that is cooled also even if the air is relatively cool like the winter temperatures in the colder climates it just turns a bit colder now the mechanism obviously require that we can build up a high pressure in order to establish the pressure difference over the expansion valve so we need a pump of sorts a compressor that can compress the vapor that comes out of the cold evaporator there are many different types of compressors, big and small. Some works with pistons, other works with a rotary principle. And within the rotary compressor types, there are again quite a few types. The compressor builds up the pressure of the vapor and at the same time the temperature. So the cold evaporated low pressure refrigerant is now being pumped out hot and under higher pressure, quite some actually, and it's being pushed through the condenser which is being cooled down and during the cooling of the refrigerant it dissipates the energy in the form of heat it collected when turning into vapor and it now turns back into liquid just like you have seen water drops on a cool surface a window maybe a cool glass of drink so now the cool liquid refrigerant is pushed back to where we started the expansion device the expansion valve oh and the refrigerant yeah that's important the refrigerant that turns from liquid into vapor and back again can actually be many different types of fluids and for the moment there's a transition taking place all over the world to use more environmentally friendly fluids or substances earlier some synthetic quite harmful substances were used and it turned out that it not that not only did these substances harm the ozone layer, but it also contributed heavily to the global warming. So now we see a more and more natural refrigerants being used. It could be methane or butane, which is basically cow burps and natural gas. But so far, less environmentally harmful synthetic brews with exotic names like R454B or R452B is being used 